Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Remarkable Coach Podcast. Uh, my name is Michael Pacheco. As always, I'm your host. And today with me for the first time, we have a returning customer. <laughs> Steve, Steve Furman, uh, my brother in music, my brother in guitars. Uh, welcome back for the first time to the Remarkable Coach. Thanks, Michael. I appreciate it. I am honored, my friend. I truly am. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. We were um, we were just talking off camera about motorcycles and guitars and all sorts of other stuff. Um, but uh, let me well, you know, let, first, let me introduce you to the people listening. If they haven't heard the first podcast, Steve helps uh, CEOs and executives reach their goals and dreams by using the proven methodology called scaling up. Uh, which works on four critical components that all businesses must focus on people strategy execution and cash that's yeah, man. Dude, you're my new publicist you're hired <laughs> um steve tell us you know tell us what's new since the last time we spoke i don't even remember when it was i think it's maybe a year and a half ago give or take yeah, I was uh, going through certification. I was figuring out how to be the best coach I can be. And I've now actually had lots of practice implementing the the uh, the scaling up methodology or platform, as we like to call it. And um, I've had some, some great clients. It, it's been a great, great ride. It's everything I thought it would be and then some. And, and I learn from my clients all the time, which nice. is very surprising. Yeah. So... Tell us about tell us about scaling up people strategy execution and cash. What's the uh, what's what's the deal there with those those four components? How do they how do they work together? How do they work together to uh, to serve you know the businesses that you work with? So scaling up uh, is really created by Vern Harnish, who also created EO Entrepreneurs Organization. Mm -hmm. It's all about getting the right people in the right seats on the bus, doing the right things holding themselves accountable, bonus, if you can get that. If the strategy is all about having a strategy, knowing what, what pond you fish in, having you know, a good function accountability charts, you know who's responsible to do what and by when and what, what's actually, uh, what, what they're actually being held accountable for. Mm -hmm. And execution is all about meeting rhythms and like following up to make sure that you're actually executing on your strategy. And I'll tell you, growth sucks cash. That's just the reality. And in a downturn, you should have six months cash reserve. But I'd like to show you these backgrounds because I think they really depict what this is all about. I'm going to slide out of the way a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so most entrepreneurs start a company because they're good at doing whatever. To make a widget, to fix something. I'm going to apologize. That is the anchor back there. And they always, you know, a lot of times they feel like they're dragging everybody up a hill. They're trying to pull everybody along. Like, come on, here's my vision. Everybody understand it. You should just know it. Mm -hmm. it doesn't really work that way, but that's how we feel as entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. A lot of times also entrepreneurs feel like this. <laughs> like it's just this, this influx of information and questions. And, you know, I always say, right? I always say WWID. What would you do? So mm -hmm. we're going to come here with a problem. Great, come. But come with some sol possible solutions as well. So that's that's part of the training methodology. But what we really do is we strive to get everybody rowing in the same direction, heading towards the same end goal, the same vision. Mm -hmm. And that's driven really by the, the CEO and the leadership team. And it's got to be disseminated down to everybody that can recite the core values, what mm -hmm. the mission of the company is. You may have quarterly rocks within your organization for your division or your, your role, but how about the company as a whole? If you could figure this out and also understand the wins of the market, in this instance, the winds behind you, hopefully, then just think how much faster, how much better you can you can do and, and get to your end goal or the vision of whoever's, you know, putting the vision out in the organization, typically the CEO, the president, the board, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's all well, about really every business owner has the same problems, man. It's just different, different companies. I know I've started six, oh my God, seven different companies, built bought and sold them. And I always for the most part, for me, it mm -hmm. was because I was trying to solve an issue, mm -hmm. fix a problem, or I had this cool idea on online data backup or the cloud in 2010 when I was doing tech, 13 mm -hmm. years ago, nobody was even thinking about true virtual desktops. 
mm-hmm. but I had a vision. I, you know, by then I knew how to run a company, but when I first started in IT, man, I had no idea what I was doing. There's no school that, that told you how to be a good business owner. Yeah. Yeah. So did you then, so to, did you then start your first company as, as, as IT? Yeah. So I learned technology in the Marine Corps in 1979. Um, I got out in 84 and I couldn't find a job in technology for the life of me. Funny story. There's an old bank that's gone. Surprise. And this these days and times, uh, Carter at savings alone. And I worked in their data processing department, key punch operator. Cause I just want to work, you know, mm-hmm. and they they had these giant flat platens on this Nixdorf, IBM Nixdorf type machine. And there's these four large platens, I think had a total of 10 megabytes was the mm-hmm. total storage. And every so often it would get loose and it would wobble. When it wobbled, the heads couldn't read the data. I go over and smack it. Bam. And it would like, like level out and it would start working again. And I became the de facto IT guy. So I'm like, wow, I kind of got a knack for this, you know? I did technology stuff in the core. I had a top secret NATO clearance. I just went out and started my own IT company. I started building PCs, installing them and servicing clients. And before I knew it, I went from uh, Steve Furman Associates to CompuNight Computers. Nice. Nice. I remember my, uh, I think my first computer, gosh, I want to say 1990. My first PC was a 386. And uh, I think it had a 20 gigabyte hard, or 20 megabyte hard drive. I'm sorry, not gigabyte, 20 megabyte hard drive. And, uh, and, Which and, was huge, huge back then. Right? Yeah, I know. And then, and then we, you know, eventually I upgraded to the 486DX2 with the turbo button, Ooh, with the nice. turbo button that you could press. <laughs> and that was basically I, overclocked the processor is all it did to make it run faster. Yeah, yeah. But it would, it would play, it would play Wolfenstein and Doom very, very well. <laughs> great, great games, man. I love Doom. I was deep in that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I, I digress. Uh, who are your, who are your clients these days? Who are you, who are you working with? What kind of, you know, you work with entrepreneurs and small businesses. Are you, um, you know, are you niching down at all in terms of industry or the size of the business that you work with? No, every, every business owner has an and executive team has the same challenges, whether you're in manufacturing or you're selling cars or you're building PCs and technology. I happen to lean or I like to work with technology companies because I know what they're going through. I help build a lot of the industry. I was doing online data backup in 2003 when magnetic media owned the world. And they were like, you want to do what with my data? You want to send it to a data center, the cloud, you know, which it wasn't called the cloud then. Not in 2003 it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm like, yeah, because then you don't got to worry about replacing those tapes or your secretary taking the tapes home because you wanted to be safe. I'm leaving them on our car seat when she goes into the, the quick check to get herself a coffee, comes out and all you know, your data's gone. So yeah, you want to move it to the cloud. And the funny thing was, it was 40 bucks a gig. I just paid uh, Apple $9.95 for two terabytes mm-hmm. for the month. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, times have changed. Um, but for me, um, oh my God, I'm not going to lie, I went blank. What was the question again? <laughs> I got, and yet I digress. Now we're even. <laughs> Happens to the uh, best. Of. Well, we're 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 talking about your clients and who they are. If you've niched down, <laughs> what kind of businesses you work with these days? What size businesses? That's where I got lost. I got lost in technology. Sorry, it's been way too many years there. That's all so, right. We, we're client agnostic. We really are. Uh, scaling up has helped over eighty thousand companies grow and scale by using the platform and the methodology throughout. I think sixty countries. And, you know, we all face the same challenges, having the right people in the right seats on the bus, doing the right things, holding ourselves accountable, having a real true strategy that everybody knows in the organization that's disseminated down. You know, I feel like a broken record, but, you know, the reality is that, you know, these it's really these four pillars that make or break a company that's going to scale. And I don't mean just grow. I mean, scale 10x, 20x, 50, 100x. Um, and there's some, if you, if you go to scaleups.com, you can see a ton of testimonials of companies that you would never know that you scaling up to grow and scale. Mm-hmm. So is, is scaling up, I mean, it's for, you know, a company of any size, 
for for Boxer, for example, right? For us, we're a, a, an online marketing agency for coaches. We've got five full timers in total. Are we? Is it? Is that something that would work, maybe work for us? So I work personally in three different areas, and some coaches only work with like five million to 150, 200 million. Some coaches work 300 million up to a billion. Sure. Um, I, I, I'm more of a, um, I've been such a startup master, I guess. I've had seven different companies mm -hmm. and I started them all myself, grew them, sold them. I shut one down in 1999, the internet cafe that died in 2000. Mm -hmm. So I'm definitely an entrepreneur because I failed at least once. But, um, you know, for me, I work with individual CEOs in a startup capacity or individual CEOs that are looking to grow and scale. Maybe they don't have the management team to delegate to yet, but I help them learn how to do that and get more time. It's all about getting your time back, man. You know, it's all about getting your freedom. Why, as entrepreneurs, do we start our own company? Not because we want to work 90 hours a week, which we end up doing, because we want to have all the freedom in the world to make all the money in the world and work when we want to. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I'm unemployable. I just, you know, I don't do well working for somebody else. After the Marine Corps, it was like, yeah, I just don't think I can really take orders anymore. And and that's fine. But but the reality is, uh, for me, I work with individual CEOs. I work with leadership teams. I do half-day workshops. I do two-day annual planning sessions and kickoffs. But where I really shine and where I can really make a big impact is working the CEO, the executive team, the leadership team, yeah. and helping them understand the ways to grow and scale their company. And it's really simple. So I want to give you the secret. Pick a big hag, a big, hairy, audacious goal as the owner of your company, okay? Mm -hmm. Write it down. Put it out there. Then you want to think about, okay, great. What do I got? That's, that's in the next three to five years. Because we used to say 10 to 25 years, but reality is with COVID, who knows what's going to happen 10 years from now. So in the next three to five years, pick your big, hairy, audacious goal. Even if you think it's lofty and you're not going to make it, pick it anyway, set it in stone, write it down. And we have a tool in our toolkit called the Vision Summary. We use that for it. And then you want to think about, okay, great. What do I got to be doing in a year in order to get to that three to five-year goal? And keep working backwards. What do I got to be doing quarterly in order to get to my yearly goal? And monthly and weekly and daily. And just like, you know, how do you eat an elephant? Mm -hmm. One bite at a time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Same thing with your business. If you can just like start, you know, where you want to be or where you want to end up with your vision and work backwards in little chunks and break it down and dissect it, it's so much easier to achieve it. And we have a tool, a set of tools in our toolbox, over 300 of them that we use to help uh, CEOs, entrepreneurs get clarity on that vision, get clarity on core values. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you a quick little story. I did a two-day annual planning session for a company I had never met. They do about twenty million a year, um, all in tech products. It happens to be, ironically, mm -hmm. and um, I asked them at the beginning of the first day at eight o'clock in the morning. I said, "If it was five o'clock tomorrow, what's the one thing you want to have accomplished?" If you know that it was five o'clock right now today, but it's tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It's like our core values. We really want to get defined on our core values because there's a bunch of them and they're not really right. And okay, great. So we did a million other exercises. I can show you on a big giant whiteboard what we did, but we did a bunch of different exercises. And at 4.40, the, the last, the second day, after we had a two hour discussion back and forth about what is the core value, what do we, you know, what do we stand for? What's innately within us, which is what your core values are. Sure. And every time they throw one out, I'd say, great, would you hire? fire and take a financial hit over that core value and if you wouldn't not a core value like and that. krista got up and she wrote down on the board and actually sarah who uh, is the ceo of the company did it in like um i don't know the iphone i guess you could do it kind of like fast time but it's not like super fast so she's handwriting really really quick and they came up with leak uh leak lead seek build and then she just dropped the uh the marker like she drops the mic <laughs> and basically they they, they want to be the leader in the industry uh -huh. they want to seek to be the best at what they do and provide the best products and services for their clients and uh they want to be able to build the right products that solve the issues and the problems for their clients is now their core values just three five no more than five it's just too much for people to remember
Yeah, no, that's great. R remind me again for the core values, hire, fire, and what was the third one? Hire people by, fire people by, and take a financial hit. Take so I have a brand promise. One of the things we help people get is their brand promise defined. And my brand promise is what's called a short pay brand promise. If I don't provide measurable value, and we define that in the beginning, note, I ask them, what's the one thing you want to have done if it was five o'clock tomorrow right now? Yeah. And they want their core values. So now I'm setting myself up. If I fail, it's going to hurt me financially. Because my short pay brand promise is if I don't provide measurable value, pay me for the measure I provided or don't pay me at all. Huh. And it's not a trick thing. It's sure. more of I, I want to do what I can to help the client. I want to help them achieve their goals. Yeah. That's where I get my happiness is watching them succeed. That's great, man. So for for the core values thing, so circling back to the four pillars of people, strategy, execution, and cash, where does the 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 core values where does that fit into those to those four those four pillars? Well, the core values is really all about people. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you another little quick story because this and, and this I, I hold near and dear to my heart. My my youngest daughter Corinne's twenty five now. Mm -hmm. She went to Syracuse and her first job was at GQ magazine. And if she sees it, she'll probably go, "Dad, I'm sure." <laughs> but anyway, so she worked at GQ as a social media designer for GQ magazine. So anything that GQ magazine put out on Instagram, my daughter created. Never got her name on any of it, but I was proud because I knew it was her. All sure. good. Yeah. Worked there for three years, loved what she did. Didn't really have a good idea what their core values were or their culture. Because uh -huh. during the, the, the you know the, the pandemic, it was a lot of people in or not in, few people in. So there really wasn't much of a culture going on. Sure. And she really admired this company called A24 Films, who just won like nine Oscars, by the way. And um, she went through five interviews, five interviews with five different people. And every single one of them embodied the things that she loved about wanting to work at that company and why she loved that company. Yeah. And they all could recite the core values. So my daughter, one of the first things that every single one of the five people asked her was about the core values because it was important to them. They probably had a scouting up coach. I don't know. But end result is she took a lateral move from GQ. She's been there six months. Yeah. And, you know, I'll brag a little bit, but she got a nice little note from her boss the night of the Oscars, wow, Corinne, it feels like you've always been here. I don't know how we ever did it without you. And they created the position for her too. Nice. But, but the moral to the story is more that she wanted to be a part of something that she could believe in, something she could, you know, have heart in, something that truly was was embodied within her core values. Mm -hmm. So people is super important. Get the right people in the right seats on the bus, man, doing the right things. I love it. I love it. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I think... Um... Man, it, it, I've never heard of core values being kind of approached in this way, but the idea of defining your core values around would you hire by, fire by, or take a financial hit for your core values, that really like that really puts the rubber to the road. Like we're not screwing around yeah. anymore. Like let's 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 stop, you know, let's stop waving the flag of, you know, our values. <laughs> let's live it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, people go around talking all this garbage, and I, I will be nice and not curse, but the reality is when you get down and what coaches help you do is see the forest within the trees. Mm -hmm. We help you dig down and we ask questions like, well, why do you think that's important? Or does it meet higher fire or would you be willing to take a financial hit over? And I will, I promise I can tell you right now, I must have re re reminded them of that question while we were going through this process during the second day yeah. for a good hour and a half of that two and a half hour part of them having discussions in and around who are we, you know, what do we stand for? What's our purpose? Why would people want to buy from us? You know, what makes us different? What's our X factor in the market? Mm -hmm. And, and it takes time. It takes, you know, a good year to take a company and really bake it and get it right. And and they'll change. You'll, you'll set your core values and yeah. three months down the road, six months down the road, you realize, you know, I kind of feel that, but I love this core value. This is yeah. really who we are. And, and that's fine. 
This is great, man. I mean, I, I'll tell you right now, like I'm going to, I'm going to walk away from this podcast and I will, I will more than likely be spending some time this weekend looking over boxers core values and reconsidering those because I'm, you know, 80% sure that I just came up with those you know, not on a whim, but you know what I mean? Like the way that everyone else comes up with them where, you know, we have integrity and we have fun and there's a family environment here and, you know, stuff like that. Um, surface, all surface. Right. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, you had good intention, I'm sure, but I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll offer you a free two hours and we'll get together and we'll go through your vision. What we call a vision statement, which is your core values, your purpose, your brand promise your BHAG and we'll set your one year and three year goals and your, and your quarterly goals. My, I mean, my, my I pleasure. Love, I would love that. I tell you what, I'll, 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 I'll throw something else on there. Why don't we record that and we can throw it up as, as a podcast so yeah. that, so that that way people can see what that process looks like. It's uh, long, tedious, and aggravating, I'll tell you right now, but it's awesome when you get it right, man. <laughs> we'll pause for bathroom breaks. <laughs> um, that's great, man. No, I, I will absolutely take you up on that. Um, and if you're, you know, if you're comfortable um, posting that, posting that kind of thing in, in public, it might give, you know, a, a prospect or two. Um, an idea of what that process looks like. Now, I don't know that anyone is going to sit through two hours of you talking to me about my company's core values, but maybe, and I don't know. <laughs> you can watch the last 10, 15 minutes and see where we ended up. There you go. I mean, that's always a possibility, but I, I'll do it because I would love to help you because you're such an awesome person. And awesome, if I, man. Help, Thank you. If I can help one person today, I had a great day, man. I love it. I love it. I appreciate that. Um, sweet, man. So let's... One thing, another thing I wanted to circle back to is you're talking, you, you, you had mentioned before, I'm, I'm looking at my notes here about, you know, it's all about getting your time back and getting your freedom back. We didn't start a business so that we could work all the time. You, you, you're speaking, you're speaking my language. Um, <laughs> oh, you're the guy with the anchor. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm my anchor. I, I, I'm, I'm the guy with an anchor. I don't think my anchor is quite that big. <laughs> um, we're, we're, we're doing all right, but what I, what I understand, you know, one of the things that, that we do for coaches at Boxer is we sell time. Time is our value proposition, right? We, when we do marketing and we, we do social media marketing and we do uh, lead generation through your website, like we're helping coaches focus on coaching. Um, and so, you know, I think, I think in terms of, you know, the audience for this podcast there, I think there's going to be a lot of people resonating with that because there's a lot of people who are spending, you know, they, they, the coaching is why they got into coaching. They didn't get into coaching so they could be on social media all day long or, oh. you know what I mean? Do, doing all this, doing all this other stuff and, and running a business takes time. So, um, the having, secret? go ahead. I said, said, so you want the secret? Yeah. For me, I can't speak for you, but for me, when I realized, when I was running my, I think I was in the business maybe 13 to 15 years. I used to go to the strategic coach up in Toronto, uh, Dan Sullivan runs that program. I actually, it's funny. I use these exercises all the time and I have the book like right here, my strategic coach book. Nice. Um, but one of the first things is I learned the, the time management system, the entrepreneurial time system it's called. And with the entrepreneurial time system, there are three kinds of days. There's a free day, a focus day, and a buffer day. Huh? It doesn't matter what day of the week, but there's three types of days throughout your seven-day week. Okay? Uh -huh. So a free day is when you turn off everything. I mean, no email, no phones, whatever. You recharge your batteries. And as an entrepreneur, I can tell you right now, when I'm focusing on the focus day, I am like all in 12 hours, man. I am zoned in doing what I do best. Yeah. And the focus day is when you spend your whole day, a 24 hour period doing the three things that make you the most money or that energize you the most. For me, it was doing sales and creating new products and services and talking to customers. But when I was out seeing customers, that was my focus day. Now what happens is 
when I'm out seeing a bunch of people, that creates a lot of work for the rest of my team. Huh. Right? Uh. So now you've created, you know, here comes a tornado. There goes Steve. He's out drumming up business. He's out talking to people. Oh, yeah. no, he's going to have this stuff. He's going to want me to figure it out and fix it. That's right. That's why you don't want to have, you know, your focus days back to back because you just create too much havoc. But let me uh -huh. explain the three days. So your free day is recharge your batteries. Yeah. 24 hours of technology. No, nothing. You just disconnect and recharge that brain cell, those brain cells. Mm -hmm. A focus day, you spend the day doing the three things that make you the most money or the most productive for you as the entrepreneur. And then the buffer day is the day that you clean up messes and you go ahead and like, you know, handle all those things you created from the focus day, like managing the project with your team. Okay, great. I got these four new deals. Here's what we're going to do over here. You probably need three technicians to do this or whatever. Uh -huh. But the whole idea of the entrepreneurial time system is your week is designed by you, mm -hmm. right? So if I think, you know what, this week I want four free days and I want to have two buffer days and one focus day, that's all good. Mm -hmm. Typically, it's more like most entrepreneurs would have a focus day on a Monday, for instance, mm -hmm. you'd have a buffer day on Tuesday and Wednesday, a focus day on Thursday, and a free day, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Mm -hmm. And then there's like tools that go along with it where you can write down your top five things you're trying to accomplish. Um, in order to break a habit, it takes 21 days. So there's your 21 day habits on it. But if you look it up online, it's the entrepreneurial time system. That is one of the first things I tell people. If you really want to start running your company more efficiently, yeah. learn how to manage your time. Yeah. And the reality is when my doors closed in my office, nobody comes in. There's yeah. a big sign that says you're not wanted here. And my employees used to laugh at me. And it got to the point where my 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 Maria, my my you know, um admin assistant would be with me for like 13 years. She yeah. would just schedule me out to see people, but she would schedule my 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 free focus, not or, or my focus on buffer days, not my free days without asking me, but she would she would fill me up and say, Okay, you're going to see these three people, you're playing golf with these two people, you're going to this dinner at that and I scheduled it and I booked it and whatever. Mm -hmm. So people. So if you think, bring it back to scaling up, having the right people around you to support you. So you don't have to be the smartest person in the room. You got to know all the smart people in the room. Right. The other, thing, the other thing that goes along with that is being willing to delegate. Yeah. Even if they do it 80% as good as you, it's 80% of your time. You're not doing it. Sure. And you can spend your time working on your business, not in your business. And you can start to focus. Mm-hmm. And do what you do best. You don't want to create the company for a reason. Because uh -huh. you're good at whatever. Go do uh -huh. it. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's where you get your time back. And that's where you get your freedom. And it, it, it's liberating, man. I love it. it. It's liberating. That's a great one. Um, I have I have not heard of that before. And I've done, I don't know, 100 or so of these interviews. And I've never heard of the entrepreneurial time system. So I will definitely be be looking that up. I feel like a lot of my days are buffer days, cleaning up messes. <laughs> I think a lot of most people's days are buffer days. And yeah. As an entrepreneur, one of the things, most of us are ADD. It's uh -huh. fine. Uh -huh. and, and I accept that I am. Maybe I have an extra D in there. I don't know. But I do know that when I focus best is in the mornings. Uh -huh. so what I've learned about myself is I get the best work done in the mornings. I can get between the hours of 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. more done than I can all day from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Yeah. Because I'm ADD. Oh, ding. There, this is going on. Oh, bing. Oh, no, I got to switch over look at Slack. And oh, they, you know what? Learn to focus. Yeah. Focus. Focus. It's huge. Yeah. I uh, have recently, the past few weeks, have been getting up at 4 a.m. Um, to get stuff done because I, I've been watching my daughter in the mornings. So she'll wake up. She's about a year. She's 13 months old. She's a year old. And she, uh, you know, she'll wake up at any time between 7 and 9 a.m. So if I'm up at four, I can usually get my morning focus work done at that point. And man, I tell you what, I get more step, more work done on a Sunday than I do on any other day of the week because I don't have things coming into my inbox. I don't have people calling me. Slack is doing nothing. And uh, here's, here's my new thing. I don't know if you can see this on there. It yeah. says, ah, there it is. It says focus. Okay. So this setting New Year's resolutions, one of the things they, they and this happened, I got this at scaling up, and you can buy them online. Um, is that you know, pick one word 
one thing you're going to do. So I turned off all my alerts on my desk. You don't hear any dings, any bongs during this conversation. My yeah. email's open. Slack is open. I have all my communications are open. And guess what? I'm going to focus on this interview, this conversation. Mm-hmm. And when I'm done, I'm going to go off and I can switch to the next one and then focus on the next one. Sure. So on a Sunday, you're not getting all this in influx. Mm-hmm. You're able to focus on what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So be mindful of that. Go, okay, great. You know what? It's Monday. Let me just close my email. Mm-hmm. Do what you do with your project you're working on. And when you're done, turn your email back on. Sure. Trust me, no one's gonna die in between you checking your email. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Not likely anyway. You know, uh-huh. I don't I don't want him to put any, any false hope out there, but you know. <laughs> highly, highly, highly unlikely. <laughs> yes. Yes. And unfortunately, you know what, in the world that we live in, and I come from the world of beepers and big giant brick cell phones way back when, yeah. um, it's like an instant response required. I mean, heck, even healthcare agencies are now sending you text messages about your appointments and my charts and this, that, and the other. And, you know, at some point, when is it just so much crap in your head, in your face that you just go, whoa. So even- I've learned to manage it. Yeah, I get I get I get uh, text messages from from my veterinarian from my dogs, <laughs> like, <laughs> literally everybody. So I have you know my phone. I don't ever have any. I don't have any kind of alerts on on my phone. So I'll check my phone every once in a while and I'll see whatever's there and deal with it. Um, and then of course you know I don't have any email alerts on at all, but I'll check email reasonably regularly. I, I do all right, with, all right with it. I'm looking for a book that I'm reading right now. I guess it's in the living room where, where I read most of the time. It call, It's called Come Up for Air uh-huh. by um, Eric Sonnenberg, I believe. And it's all about what we just talked about, you know, like focusing your time, turning off certain devices and, and, your, and your notifications so you can actually focus. Yeah. And they say in this book that you can actually gain an hour to three hours back a week. But if you get a whole team of five or 10 people doing that, Mm. think about it man that's 15 hours of time back yeah. oh and it takes the brain roughly 13 minutes to switch gears from one thing you're working on to the next one and truly be engaged and involved in it yep pretty powerful stuff and awesome. we help people do that that's part of what we do i love it steve how are you um how are you getting your clients? How do you market your services? Do you do you get for like scaling up? Or is it scale up? Scale up. Scaling scale up. up. Do, do, do they pass clients on to you as one of their kind of representatives, one of their coaches? How does that work? They do. If they have a lead in your general area, there's 230 coaches throughout the world. Yeah. From New Zealand, New Jersey, to California, you name it. I happen to be the only one that's in New Jersey. So if anything happens in New Jersey, typically it'll come to me. But the reality is it has to be a fit. If somebody's looking for someone specifically in nuclear science, I'm probably not your coach. Although we all have the same problems. I don't know nuclear science. If that's a requirement, they're going to go to the community and find someone that specializes in nuclear science. Um, But that I do a posting on LinkedIn three to five times a week. I do blogs once, twice a month. I have a newsletter goes out every month. On LinkedIn itself, I have my own insights newsletter. I have like 800 subscribers on. I do free webinars. I do podcasts. Hello. (laughs) I do do workshops. Um, You know, I give and I give and I give and, and I don't give for any other reason. And if I can help one other entrepreneur or present CEO not have to go through some of the bull crap I went through. Yeah. Or you didn't know at the time. Awesome. And if I get paid for it, it's a bonus. But that's not why I do it. I do it because I love helping people. That's great, man. And I think um, you know, that what that does, man, is it, it tends to if you, if you're putting out all this content and your value forward like that and you're helping people all the time, you're you know, going through this process, we were talking about it a little bit earlier of kind of pre-qualifying your leads. You're giving people an opportunity to hear what you have to say. You're building trust with people as you're helping them do stuff. Um, mm-hmm. It's just, it's, it's a really great way to do marketing for any business, especially I think for coaches, because coaching is such personal work, you know? Yeah. And if you can 
deliver that value through content and you're you're consistently putting out helpful content, truly helpful content, right? Not just no. garbage content, truly helpful right. content. You know, when it when when it comes time for someone who is thinking about hiring you, it's not even going to be a sales conversation anymore. It's going to be a a a fit conversation. Yeah, because they That's already. Exactly you. Yeah, and, and exactly correct. And to add on top of all of that, I do have a marketing team that does that. I also have a virtual assistant. But to add on top of all of that, I also um, am very intentional about which networking groups I spend my time in. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't want to spend my time in a, a, a B2C type networking group because I'm not really dealing with consumers. I'm dealing with businesses. For sure. Exactly. We're running corporations. So I try and intentionally, I've been very definitive about joining specific groups that are intentional about helping each other. Mm -hmm. And they don't, it's like hire, fire, and take a financial hit over it. They don't meet my core value of A, honestly, I'll say it. I don't deal with assholes. Huh. That's just, that's my number one core value. I don't got the time. I don't got the time for it. Man, I just, you know, I'm look, I'm 62 years old. I spent way too much time of my life wasting time and, and time is a commodity we don't have to waste. Yeah. I want to deal with the right people. And I tell my clients and I'll tell you and everybody else, I'll never give you what you want unless what you want is what you need. Mm -hmm. And that's just that's just who I am. I like it. You don't have time to waste either. I don't care if you're 40 or you're 50 or 60 or 90. Time is a commodity we, we cannot get any more of. Yeah, yeah. You should, uh, you should use some of that time that you're, that you're saving, not dealing with assholes, to practice that guitar some more. <laughs> oh, I promise I will, but I'm actually in the midst of writing a book. So, uh, you know, you got to spend some time on that as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I can't do it. I'm learning. Uh, Steve, this has been a great conversation, buddy. It's good to catch up. Is there anything else that you want to chat about that we haven't had an opportunity to touch upon yet? If you're not sure where to go, or you're not sure what to do, you know, that's a time to, to really sit back and reflect and wonder, should you talk to somebody that can give you an outside perspective, whether it's a coach or a therapist or your, your next door neighbor, I don't really care who. I would, you know, if it's about your business, I'd recommend getting a professional. But, you know, the, there's no shame in needing help. Here, here's a, a God's honest truth. I have a coach. Mm -hmm. Every sports successful Michael Jordan to Jordan Spieth to, to Tiger to, to Mike Tyson, they all have coaches. Well, why do you have a coach? Because it's so easy to get wrapped up in your head, feel that imposter syndrome, not feel like you have any way to turn. And the reality is you don't have to know all the answers. You got to know who's around you that can help you get the right answer. So surround yourself with the right people. I think is really the, 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 the crux of it, you know? Yeah. I love it. You gotta have, you gotta have that, that, that third party, that, that external pair of eyes and ears, to see the things that you are not able to see because you're in the eye of the hurricane, right? You can't see all the stuff that's swirling around you because you're just, you're right in the middle of it. And well you got to have those, yeah, the, the fresh eyes and the fresh ears. Um, awesome, well man. Well said. Well Thanks. said, so that we'll start tomorrow. <laughs> I was just trying out my clothes on you, you know. I love it, I love it. <laughs> Um, awesome, Steve, where can our, well, actually first, do you have anything, do you have any, any programs, um, any, any yes. offers that you want to pitch anything? Yes. You wanna, yeah. Let us, let us know. I offer a free hour and a half free life changing, free, 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 no charge, no strings attached, life changing conversation, have a consultation with me. You can go to my website, the number four pillar coach.com or to make life easier, learn more about me. If you look at my name in the thing, there is a link tree. L I N K T R dot E E forward slash the number four pillar coach. It has all of our events. I'm doing a uh, workshop on um, where are we going and how do we get there? Or, or I'm sorry, what's holding you back rather on the 19th at two o'clock. I have a marathon, which is a mastermind group for CEOs and entrepreneurs that just want to talk to someone else who gets them. And really, you know, I'm not really coaching as much as I'm facilitating, but there'll be a little coaching in there as well. And um, yeah, I'm on LinkedIn forward slash 
Steve Furman, you know, LinkedIn slash IN slash Steve Furman. Just go to my website, probably the best, fourpillarcoach.com. Awesome. And we, uh, you know, for those obviously listening or um, in the car, or if you're listening to this while you're on a jog, uh, we'll have all that stuff in the show notes uh, at our website, boxer.agency. Uh, Steve, man, I appreciate you making the time to chat with me again. It's always a pleasure, Michael. I love you, man. You're a good awesome. people. Thank you, brother. Uh, and all, as always, thank you to our listeners and viewers. We'll see you guys uh, next time. I'm sure Steve will be back with us again for a third episode, maybe uh, in 2024. <laughs> cool. Thanks. Thanks, appreciate everyone. It. Cheers.